There are some companies on this show that are so bad that uh, I will never be an investor in that company. Today, I'm going to warn you heads up, this is going to be a bit of a car crash. So listen, if you're only interested in watching this show for the top 100 companies, today is not going to be one of those companies, I'm afraid. We're looking at a FTSE fledgling company, so a very small company. Um, but they're not going to be a top 100, I'll tell you that for sure. So if you're only interested in those, fine. Probably don't watch any further than here. Um, however, for perspective purposes... This is a good company to look at because it gives us an idea of just how bad things can get. Hey there guys, welcome to the FTSE show with me, Chris Chillingworth. This is the show where we dissect UK companies in the London Stock Exchange and we take a look at all their financials. We run financial analysis on these companies and look to see what kind of odds they have of being a great growth company over the next 10, 20 years. We're talking long-term investments, not the short term. We're not talking about buying a company and holding it for a few weeks, riding it up through the uh, the increase that we might see in the recovery in 2020, uh, and then jumping back out again afterwards and picking up a little profit. We're talking about holding a company for 300, 400, maybe even a thousand percent returns on the shares that we buy. Uh, and we're looking, we need strong companies to achieve that. And so we're looking for those companies. And I have a scoring algorithm that I've created that I haven't shared the details of. And people keep asking me, will you share the details of that? It's my secret sauce. It's my um, it's my 11 herbs and spices. It's not going to be shared on here. This is something that I've created. I've put a lot of time and effort into building. And it scores it, scores these companies based on what I'm looking for in these companies. Now, if you want to know more about that, if you want to learn more and get deeper into uh, my inner circle, if you will, and understand where I'm coming from. Um, I do have a membership program and I do have, we just hit just over a hundred people on that now. Um, and if you want to be a part of that, if you want to know what companies I'm investing in, if you want to have a look at my personal portfolio of investments, how much I'm buying of what companies, at what price, all that kind of stuff, then you can come and get involved in that. That's at thecleantrader.co.uk. If you're just in this for the free videos on YouTube, absolutely fine no skin off my nose at all um it's only for those people who feel like they want the extra information uh of which you know hundreds of people do and it's great value and uh, you know i work very hard on producing those reports but it's cool if you're not interested it's not a problem um today we're going to take a look at french connection group and yeah it's not pretty Okay, let's take a look at French Connection Group PLC. So these guys are a clothing retail company, Epic Code FCCN. They're in the FTSE fledgling index, uh, and the sector, of course, is retail. So um, this is going to be a really interesting one to look at because it's all the hallmarks of what we don't want to see, <laughs> right? So straight away, I'm going to be up front. This is not going to be pretty. Um, looking at the the revenue, we've gone from 202 million in 2010 down to sub 200 million in 2013 then down to 150 million in 2017 and now in 2019 we're looking at 135 million so that's a downward trajectory if ever i saw one revenue has been falling consistently over the last 10 years for sure um, looking at the cost of sales or looking at the gross margin i think it's probably more suitable we can see that in 2010 gross margin sat at 51 percent it then fell to 48 percent in 2012 yeah, by 2015, we're looking at 46%. By 2017, 45%. And now 42%. So we've gone from 51% to 42% over that same time period. So not only is revenue falling, cost of sales is falling, but at a slower rate. And so because of that, the, the slice of the pie that French Connection are getting from that revenue, despite it decreasing, the actual slice of the pie is decreasing as well. Uh, from 50, 51% down to only 42% slice of the cake. So, I mean, 42% is not bad in itself, but the fact that it's going down along with the downward revenue, major concerns for anybody who's looking for a company to hold for the next 10, 20 years and hope that the share price is going to grow 300, 400%. I mean, highly unlikely you're going to see that with this company with those kind of numbers. Looking at the expenses, from 2010 to 2019, so that's actually 10, uh, 11 years worth of annual reports, every single year the expenses have been above the gross profit. 
So uh, back in 2010, we're looking at about 106% of the gross profit spent on expenses. Uh, by 2014, 112% of the uh, gross profit spent on expenses. By 2019, 125% spent. So what that essentially means, to break it really down into simplistic terms, the gross profit in 2019 was 57 million. The expenses cost them 71 million. So we know, not only in 2019 did they make a loss, but every year, <laughs> over the last 11 years, this company has made a loss. Uh, the debt level, nothing to talk about. No no interest on debt being paid at all. There's probably no debt. Once we get to the balance sheet, we'll take a look. But it's, if it is, it's going to be minimal. There's no debt issue here. This is just a company whose expenses cost them more than the profits they make. It costs them more than the, uh, the, the, the gross profit, which means they're making a loss. And when we come down to the net earnings, you can see that straight off the bat. Every year, minus net earnings, three point minus three point four in twenty ten, uh, up to minus five point eight in twenty fourteen, up to minus seven point one in twenty sixteen. Now in twenty nineteen, minus ten point six percent. So this is a company in twenty nineteen that brought in one hundred and thirty five million in revenue, and lost money. By the end of the year, they'd lost fourteen point four million. The cost of running this business, the expenses are far too high. They are costing this company ever making any profit. So to save this company, you've either got to increase revenue, very hard to do, uh, especially in the clothing retail sector, or you've got to cut expenses somehow because those expenses at 71.6 million are far too high relative to what this company is able to make. Um, it's, it's just not good. Uh, to lose 10% is very, very poor. To lose every single year from 2010 to 2019 is incredibly poor. Uh, and I think we'll see that in the share pr price when we look at the chart. Coming into the balance sheet, the balance sheet is actually relatively healthy. 2.5 current ratio. Uh, we're looking at the current liabilities at 27.8 million the current assets are 68.7 million, so that's pretty good. Um, Want to look at the debt levels, short-term debt zero, long-term debt zero. So like I thought, no debt whatsoever to speak of at this business, and there hasn't been over the last 11, 12 years, no debt whatsoever. So debt's certainly not the issue here. Uh, it's just they're not profitable. They're not running as a profitable business, and they haven't been for quite some time, and things are getting worse and worse every single year. Um, there's no return on shareholder equity to speak of. They're not buying back their own shares. And retained earnings have fallen over the last 12 years from 56 million down to 28 million. So even retained earnings are falling as well. This is everything's pointing in the wrong direction. Every single thing's going in the wrong direction. And, you know, I love the fact that there's no debt there, but that's just that's the only positive I can see in this whole company. It's not good. Uh, let's go and take a look at the chart then. There's nothing more to speak about here. So I just want to show you guys something very interesting. Let's take a look at Sainsbury's. We looked at these guys last week, right? Let's take a look at their chart. That's their chart. Now let's look at the French Connection chart. It's so similar. It's so, so similar. This retail sector is really struggling. And we've seen this, this company fall from £2.50 a share back in May 2007, all the way down to today's price of 7 pence. So this is a company that fallen from, from grace. They've fallen from highs of £2.50 a share down to 7 pence a share. And it's absolutely justified based on those numbers. This is a company that just aren't making any money. How could you invest in a company like this when they've got 11, 12 years worth of just losing year after losing year after losing year? Unless something significant was to change at this company, I can't see any reason why you'd want to invest in this. I certainly don't. This The odds of this company being a 300 to 400% return company in terms of share price over the next 10, 20 years are very low and it's for that reason I'm clearly not interested in what's going out here uh, we can actually see there's a headline for FCCM here on this website it says 
Uh, French Connection says could run out of cash within months. Uh, and that was posted. Let's have a quick look at that. Ah, oh, May 2019. So in May 2019, they were talking about them running out of cash. Uh, then 2020 happened. So, yeah. <laughs> Back in uh, uh, December 2020, or let's call it January 2020, before we really knew the impact of this um, outbreak that's, that swept the world, they were trading at 35 pence a share, now down to 7 pence a share. So, uh, yeah. They deserve to be there. I don't see that as a bargain, personally. Uh, it would be a bargain if all their financials looked amazing and they were trading at 7p a share, but their financials look very poor. Uh, and uh, let's go and take a look and see how they do on the leaderboard. Okay, guys. So we don't really have a great deal to talk about because the price is at 7 pence per share. Uh, the assets per share comes to about 47 pence a share, which was pretty much where they were at the end of 2019. Uh, beginning of 2020, before the big, uh, before the big crash of 2020, if you will, um, and so you know you could argue that they're probably valued at around 40 pence a share, maybe. But this is a company you've got to bear in mind. This is a company that's not making any profit. So really, what's the value? You know, why are their shares worth anything if they're not able to make any money for the last 12 years? And I don't just mean they're not able to make any money. I mean they are running at a loss every single year. That's not a company that I want to invest in. Uh, similar to Aston Martin in how poor they are, um, the price has obviously been hit a lot worse because Aston Martin don't have all these... Uh, French Connection don't have all these promises of people coming in and saving them like Aston Martin do. So uh, French Connection looking very poor and... Yeah, if if I'm going to put my my hand up and say of which companies we've looked at that I feel are in real trouble, I think this could be one of them. I think French Connection at 7 pence a share now, having fallen all that way, having looked at the financials and seen really everything's going downwards, revenues falling, um, uh, certainly profits are falling, and there doesn't seem to be any obvious way out of this. And knowing the brand and knowing the clothing brand and and think and, and understanding the industry the competitiveness of this industry, I think they've got some real issues. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they're a casualty of 2020. Perhaps uh, it'd be very interesting to see. Not interested in the slightest, as you can imagine. Um, I'm not even going to write them a card to go up on the board. That's how bad it is. You know, at least go through the motions, Chris, and pretend, right? Uh, I'm not even going to do that today. I literally, it'll be a waste of my card. I have these little cards that I make up with these little Velcro things to stick on the board. I don't want to waste it because um, I can use this next week. Listen, they scored minus 105 points. Not the worst we've actually seen in terms of pricing. I think uh, uh, Aston Martin scored worse than that. Um, but they're not going to make it onto our board because the caliber of this board is increasing. They they don't make the grade by any stretch. Um, and not a company that I'm personally interested in investing in, of course. But I think very useful from an educational point of view, from a, a point of view of setting some perspective on what we're doing here and why some of these great companies are so good. Listen, I always go through these kind of ebbs and flows of poor companies, good companies. I'll promise next week we'll take a look at a, a very decent company that will push for a top 10 position, maybe even a top four position. Um, a company that I'm very much aware of and very much like and uh, have already seen the numbers. So we'll include one of those next week. Um, for the other episode, feel free to send me any recommendations or suggestions of companies you'd like me to take a look at on this show i do have a list it is always growing but it can always have more companies added to it and the more frequently i see certain companies the more um people are asking for the same company the more chance they're going to be they're going to have of getting on the show so um yeah make your suggestions known in the comments below thank you very much for watching i hope it's been useful and i'll see you guys next week cheers Thank <music> you.